was that like that kind of that period there where two of the finest young prospects and amateurs in the country were in the same gym. I know you were separate times, but you were in the same gym. You might have passed each other walking through the doors. I know it was kept you were kept apart, so, but what was that like? That must have been that must have been really intense. Yeah, no, I mean it was. I. I was a big lad for, for, for my weight and age, so I, I always um, trained with the guys and there was a really good crop of fighters who were two, three years older than me and obviously James DeGal was one of them. So we did lots of sparring together, we did lots of training together and everyone got on, you know, it was yeah. a tight-knit club, you know, you couldn't not get on because... Well, Mick made you sure you did get something. on, didn't he? That was one of his things, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yeah, yeah, and... and um, just yeah, there was. I mean, there was. There was never. If if a spa got sort of out of hand, it was addressed straight away. There was. There was no. Right, we'll finish this outside. You know, on the cobbles, in our own time or anything like that. You know, everyone had to get on. Um, and yeah, Mick, Ernie, Peter, everyone who was involved in the gym would, yeah. would make sure of that. Um, but like always, you know, we, we went from being a successful junior club to a successful senior club. Yeah. Once you become seniors, you're going to have to fight each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can't be separated by weight and age. Um, and De Gale, who was a fantastic amateur boxer, um, mm. won two ABA titles, won a bronze medal in the Commonwealth Games. But we were going to have to meet because we're the same weight and we both yeah. want the same thing. Um, and Mick done the, the, the sort of the best he could. So we didn't really do any, we didn't do any sparring together, but none of us got any preferential treatment. Um, we came in on the same same day, same same nights. Um, did the pad work? You know, did everything that was that was available. We just literally didn't spar each other. Um, and then we just was on for we had to, we had to box, you know. And that, and from there, of course, it it become a, fa a famous rivalry. But um, neither of us would have had it any other way. And I think we've probably brought the best out of each other in that yeah, respect I'd because we you know we want to be the number one and you know <laughs> he's ABA champion champion of the country and I said oh, well he's not even number one in his gym you know and that's where it would come down to Steve and I remember you in particular who was covering a lot of amateur boxing at the time uh, mainly for the BBC saying this is extraordinary two guys from the same gym and I was like it's not really can it it must happen all the time and you said nope no. this is this is a freak thing and it um It'll make for a tremendous story, if anything else, um, you know, in years to come, and and it, and it did, and, and obviously uh, I beat James, but then he went on to win an Olympic gold medal. Yeah. So um, I mean, I'm I'm proud for the club yeah. that this club produced an Olympic champion. Yeah. Um, so should be. So you know, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyone Just, else you, would think, oh, it could have been me. It, but, it could have been you, yeah, it could have whatever, been you. It you know. could have been you. But. Yeah, it could have been me. It wouldn't have been me. I didn't have it. Like, but um, I was proud when he won his first ABA title, James, because I was his sparring partner for that. Okay. Uh, and, you know, I was proud for the club. And I still am. Every bit of success that this club produces, um, I'm proud of the club and I'm happy for Mick and everyone else who have volunteered and dedicated um, so much time and energy into... Helping others more than anything else. That's 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 all it is.